Royal Academy Awards. Brought to you by Revlon, revolutionary products for revolutionary women. American Express, for life, for living. Chevrolet, the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day, genuine Chevrolet. And Coca-Cola, nothing looks like it, nothing tastes like it, it's always Coca-Cola. For the 67th year, movie fans have been gathering since early morning to share in the excitement of the Academy Awards here at the Shrine Auditorium. You're invited to join them as the film community celebrates Oscar night. One of the brightest stars of Bullets Over Broadway, Oscar nominee Jennifer Tilly. Nominated for the third time for supporting actor, the highly respected Martin Landau. Nominated tonight for Best Actor, Hollywood favorite John Travolta and his wife actress Kelly Preston. Star of True Lies and three-time presenter Jamie Lee Curtis. Nominated tonight for Best Actor, his third nomination, Morgan Freeman. Oscar nominee for Best Actress tonight, Susan Sarandon and Tim Robbins. Nominated tonight for Best Actress, double Oscar winner Jodie Foster. Last year's supporting actor winner, the versatile Tommy Lee Jones. Last year's winner for Best Actor nominated again for Forrest Gump, Tom Hanks with his wife actress Rita Wilson. That's Holly Hunter. Nominated for supporting actor in Forrest Gump, Gary Sinise. From the accounting firm of Price Waterhouse, that would be Sharon Stone there. From the accounting firm of Price Waterhouse, LLP, who tabulate the balloting and guarantee the secrecy and the integrity of the results, Mr. Dan Lyle and Ms. Laura Hobart. Worldwide box office favorite, Arnold Schwarzenegger with his wife, Maria Schreiber. Charming young romantic star, Britain's Hugh Grant and Quentin Tarantino nominated tonight. Double Oscar winner, three-time presenter, Sally Field. That's Lawrence Fishburne, nominee last year for Best Actor. International favorite, two-time Oscar nominee, Sylvester Stallone. The beautiful and talented star of Outbreak, Renee Russo. That's Debbie Allen, five-time Oscar choreographer. The distinguished nominee for Best Actor, Nigel Hawthorne. Steve Martin with former Oscar winner, Diane Keaton. Supporting actor winner in 89, third, third time presenter tonight, Denzel Washington. Oscar winner, nominated again tonight, Diane Weiss. Nominated tonight for Best Actress for Pulp Fiction, Uma Thurman. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, director Arthur Hiller. billion of you in our audience scattered around the world good evening or good morning or good afternoon <laughs> or good night <laughs> uh, no no it was uh, you know it was in 1895 that movies were first shown to people in groups in theaters so here it is the 100th birthday of the professional exhibiting of motion pictures and the 67th Annual Rewarding of Excellence, the Academy Awards. <laughs> the theme of our celebration is comedy and the movies, so we look forward to lots of laughs as we look backward to the comedies that have kept us in stitches. But in addition to the sound of laughter, there's also happily a rising chorus for our National Endowment of the Arts. Because of the possibility of reduction in funding for the NEA and the NEH, that is a reduction in funding for our culture and our history. That money is desperately needed to help all the dedicated 
film preservation groups. and to prevent any more of our great film treasures from being lost to us, and to encourage the growth of new and dynamic artists who stimulate our feelings and our thoughts and who give us our identity. So please, let's all join together to help continue the preservation of our cultural history and provide the seed for our new voices, so that in years to come, we at the Academy will still have excellence to reward. Now let's get on with the laughter and the magic of the movies. Academy Award winner Chuck Workman combines both comedy and magic in a fast-paced journey in and out of the screen through the ages of comedy featuring Tim Curry, Kathy Najimy, and Mara Wilson. Go ahead, kids. Make them laugh. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> in Keokuk one night, they were so jammed in they couldn't laugh. Ha, ha, ha. They had a laugh. Ho, ho, ho. Plastics. Had a mole? Yeah, I've had it all my life. Oh, have it anymore. Make them laugh. Make them laugh. Don't you know everyone wants to laugh? My dad said, be an actor, my son. But be a comical one. You late, they'll be standing in line. I'm sorry, I'm late. I mean, I had the one bra, the dress, all the celebrity stuff. Well, get in here. <laughs> I'm not getting in there. Honey, I'm afraid of heights. Come on, Tim, come down. And you could charm the critics, and I'm not to eat. This is the Oscar job. Well, she can't. She wasn't nominated. Just slip on a banana, feel the world's at your feet. That's right, smile for Thailand, baby. Make them laugh, make them laugh. Is everybody happy? Now you can study Shakespeare and be quite elite. And you can charm the critics but have nothing to eat. So put on a smile and the world's at your feet. Make them laugh, make them laugh, make them laugh. Make them laugh. Don't you know everyone wants to laugh? My grandpa said go out and tell them a joke. Hello? It's plenty of hope. Make them Make them scream. What? Take a fall, but a wall split a scene. You start off by pretending you're a dancer with grace. Now yeah, wiggle till they're giggling all over the place. We've done this before. Swings. Make them laugh, make them laugh, make them laugh. Are you on, dudes? Excuse me?
the late. Ladies and gentlemen, your host for the 67th Annual Academy Awards, David Letterman. Thank you very much. Now we're five minutes late. <laughs> By the way, if uh, Mr. Hiller is still in the uh, auditorium, there's some guys out in the parking lot that'd like to talk to him about hoop dreams, so. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 67th Annual Academy Awards. I won't lie to you, I'm very, very excited and I've been dying to do something all day, and I think maybe we can take care of this. Oprah? <laughs> Uma? Uma? Oprah? I feel much better. <laughs> Have you kids met Keanu? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, before we go any farther, the uh, people that I work for uh, back in New York City have asked me to make the following announcement. CBS has signed off for the evening. As you know, of course, tonight is the night that celebrates the phrase, it's an honor just to be nominated. <laughs> That's right, and Jim Carrey is subtle. But you know, <laughs> here's the good news. Losers tonight will not go home empty-handed. In fact, all nominees in the Best Actress category will get the opportunity to have a child with Anthony Quinn. So there you go. <laughs> you can't. So I was thinking about this. Uh, earlier this year, Newt Gingrich was talking about how a lot of social problems in this country could be, watched by watching, uh, could be fixed by watching movies, and he suggested, he recommended that, for example, for some of these problems, we could watch Boys Town, take care of some of those problems by watching the movie Boys Town. And then he said that, you know, maybe we could settle the baseball strike, and he recommended then uh, watching Field of Dreams. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, instead of being Speaker of the House, Maybe this guy would be better off working at a blockbuster, you know? <laughs> Something to do. <laughs> Oprah, Uma. Uma, Oprah. It's going to be one of those things I won't be able to stop doing all night long. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's no getting around it. Tonight is certainly an important event, almost as important as a DreamWorks press conference. <laughs> Are you like me? Are you getting a little tired about reading about these guys? Of course, uh, Steven Spielberg, Jeffrey Katzenberg, and David Geffen, one of the big stories of the year, got together and formed DreamWorks SKG, their own studio. Well, they're a hit already, aren't they? <laughs> That'll send a stock sky high. <laughs> uh, DreamWorks SKG, not to be confused with the DreamWorks Etc. ETC. That's a place in the valley where you buy waterbeds, but that's a whole different deal. 
But you know, to me, it's amazing when you think about it, what these three kids can do with a dream. With a dream and $1.8 billion. I actually, I think that this partnership is going to be really, really good for Hollywood because now, instead of hoping that they're not successful individually, you know, it, it's really a time saver because now you can hope they're not successful as a group and it's a much better deal that way. Uma Oprah. Well, of course, Forrest Gump said life is uh, like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, unless, of course, you're sitting next to Roger Ebert, and then you know you're not going to get any. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I, I don't feel good about that, by the way. Uh, it's another blockbuster year for Hollywood, uh, the motion picture interview uh, with the vampire. Did over $100 million business, over $100 million business. Of course now, uh, in New York City, for marketing purposes, that movie uh, was released under the title, Bite Me. Hey, it's all the <laughs> You know, I know that's not much of a joke, but I just thought it might be fun in front of a billion people to say, bite me. Earlier this year, there was a deal now with uh, Savoy Pictures and Sylvester Stallone. As I understand this now, they gave him $20 million to star in a yet-to-be-determined film. $20 million for a yet-to-be-determined film. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. The only thing yet to be determined is which Roman numeral goes after the word Rocky. That's the only thing, right? That's it. And then maybe get Oprah and Uma to work in the film. <laughs> One of the pictures nominated tonight for uh, Best Foreign Film, as you know, Eat, Drink, Man, Woman. <laughs> Coincidentally, as I understand it, this is also how Arnold Schwarzenegger asked Maria Shriver out on their first date. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, it was uh, quite a year for uh, romance in the uh, motion pictures. Uh, Hugh Grant, of course, kissed Andy McDowell. Uh, Warren Beatty kissed Annette Bening, and Marlon Brando kissed Larry King. Woo! I think I speak for all Americans who happen to see that on CNN when I say, yee, yee. Ladies and gentlemen, when I was given the honor of hosting the 67th Annual Academy Awards, I knew I had to find out as much as I possibly could about the motion picture industry. Well, living in New York City... <laughs> well, well, thank you very much. I'm also doing very well in Hooked on Phonics. <laughs> living in New York City, I've learned that when you really want to know about something, anything, there's a group of experts that are always willing and eager to share their knowledge and opinions. Yes, New York City cab drivers. So one night, I went out, hailed some cabs, and talked to cab drivers about the Academy Awards, movies, and life. Hey. Hi. Good, how are you? You've won an Academy Award, and we want your immediate reaction. And the winner is Charles. Wow. Uh, have your friends told you that you look like a movie star? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Who, who do they tell you you look like? I was younger. I Jerry Lewis slightly. Oh, Jerry Lewis. That's great. <laughs> Dennis, did you ever see that Robert De Niro movie, Taxi Driver? You talking to me? You talking to me? Are 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 you talking to me? What does Hakuna Matata mean? Nothing to me. I don't know either, but it's fun to say it. Let's say it together a few times. Uh, Hakuna, Hakuna Matata. Hakuna, Hakuna Matata. Matata. 
อาคุณธรรมทาระอาคุณธรรมทาระอาคุณธรรมทาระอาคุณธรรมทาระอาคุณธรรมทาระอาคุณธรรมทาระ The circle of life Are you talking to me? The circle of life Are you talking to me? You talking to me? อาคุณธรรมทาระ You talking to me? อาคุณธรรมทาระ Here, do me a favor. Try on a pair of these special 3D glasses. I'll put mine on. Edwin, are you enjoying the 3D glasses? Yes, that's fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. What do you like better, goobers or raisinets? Raisinets. 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 Goobers. When you go to the movies, you usually get some of that movie theater popcorn. Yes. Yeah, me too. I love the movie uh, theater popcorn. Would you like some now? I sure would. Eddie, do you do any impressions of uh, movie stars or anybody famous? Uh, Jim's, uh, James Cagney. Oh, uh, James Cagney? Yes. Oh, let's see that. You dirty rat. You dirty, 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 dirty rat. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, I only do one impression, really, uh, Eddie. It's a Jack Nicholson. You want to see it? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Welcome to our New York City cab driver friends. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, Quincy Sigourney. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your wigs and keys. It's time to start passing out Academy Awards. That's right, when you hear your name, please come to the stage in an orderly single file and pick up your Oscar. <laughs> we should all be home in about a half an hour. <laughs> the first award of the evening is for Best Supporting Actress. Here to present it is a man who not only won an Academy Award for his fine work in The Fugitive, but also actually appeared in every movie released last year. Ladies and gentlemen, Oscar winner, Tommy Lee Jones. Five talented women found five demanding roles this year, and by breathing life into them, they have won our admiration and respect. And one of them is about to win an Oscar. For best performance by an actress in a supporting role, the nominees are Rosemary Harris and Tom and Viv. Never before has one of us been carted off in disgrace to a lunatic's house. You swore to us, Tom, you would always look after Vivi. So now you're famous on a bookshelf. What do we have left to give you? Helen Mirren in The Madness of King George. No, this must not be. The son in charge of the father? He will be put away. This is his death warrant. Uma Thurman in Pulp Fiction. Want to dance? No, 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 no. I do believe Marcellus, my husband, your boss, told you to take me out and do whatever I wanted. Now I want to dance, I want to win, I want that trophy. <laughs> Jennifer Tilly in Bullets Over Broadway. Dr. Red, you're telling me I'm overacting in the first scene and I don't know what I'm saying? See, you know when I'm doing cheaches, I'm working on a superior lap, like, ha, 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 he, he, he. <laughs> Diane Wiest in Bullets Over Broadway. You get everything in life that you want. Have you thought about what I said before about Don't the way speak. I feel? But I, I, I want to express Don't the... Don't speak. Don't. Just a few things that I want to tell Don't you. When speak. we first met... No. Our no. Our no. Don't speak. We Please, Don't speak. Please. Don't speak. Please. Don't speak. And the Oscar goes to 
Diane Weist and Bullets Over Broadway. Gosh, just let me put on my glasses because this is as surprising and marvelous as it was the first time. Although this time I need glasses. <laughs> it's a difference, but I'm so privileged um, to be in the company of these gifted women, including Jennifer Tilly, my colleague, who's so wonderful. <laughs> I'm in debt to my loyal friend and the remarkable artist, Woody Allen. He gave me such a gift with this role, and with this gift came acting with John Cusack, being lit by the great cinematographer Carlo De Palma, um, costumed by Jeffrey Curlin, working with Santo Laquasto, a great cast, a great crew. Um, my thanks also to Tracy Jacobs, Bobby Greenhut, Jean Demanian, and Harvey and Bob Weinstein. I have to thank my family, Martha, Harris Eulen, Kathleen Tolan, my brothers Greg and Donnie, Clarice, the Steve Tessiches, Arlene Donovan, and my sweet daughters, their sweet patients, Emily and Lily, without whom nothing is anything. And Sam Cohen is their godfather. If the world was a perfect place, Every kid would have a godfather like Sam. Stay tuned for Sharon Stone, Renee Russo, and a performance of the first nominated original song. <laughs> the Oscar telecast, Ms. Sharon Stone. Tomorrow, when the post-mortems take place in the press and television, a great deal of time and space will be concerned with who wore what and how they looked at tonight's ceremonies. Fashion and films have always been linked together. Our memory of Marilyn Monroe is almost inseparable from the white dress that billowed up above her waist in the seven-year itch. And the white outfit worn by Peter O'Toole in Lawrence of Arabia said as much as words about the coolness of the character. Costumes tell us, in a vivid shorthand, a great deal about the person, the place, and the period of the film. These are the costume designers, who have made such a significant contribution to the films they were assigned to bring to life. For the adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, nominees Lizzie Gardner and Tim Chappell made the outrageous acceptable. In Bullets Over Broadway, nominee Jeffrey Curlin found the right note to recreate the colorful fashions of the Roaring Twenties. The grand look of the 19th century was captured by nominee Colleen Atwood for the film version of Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. The Old West never looked better or more authentic than under the watchful eye of nominee April Ferry and her costume designs for Maverick. Elegance is always a challenge to recreate, but the designs of nominee Modèle Bickel for Queen Margot delivered on every count. And the Oscar goes to... And the Oscar goes to Lizzie Gardner and Tim Chappell for the adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Well, what a surprise. Um, 
We'd like to thank, firstly, the costume designers who uh, nominated this in the first place, because that was definitely one of the best compliments we've ever had. And thank you to the Academy for voting for us. It's much heavier than it looks, I tell you. Um, and... Uh, Shut up, my turn. OK. Um, <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, Stephen Elliott, and I wish he was here, and he should be. Um, I'd like to thank Al Clark and Michael Hamlin, the whole cast and crew of Priscilla. They are wonderful, and we wish to God they were here. Uh, to Polygram Pictures, Gramercy, Michael Kuhn, and the Academy, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I think we need to go and cry with some dignity now. Thank you. <laughs> need a drink. <laughs> I'm telling you, American Express can't buy publicity like that. <laughs> to introduce uh, the first of this year's five nominees for Best Picture, please welcome the star of Speed, this summer's action thriller about a Los Angeles City bus with a CBS primetime show on board. Here now is the only actor in Los Angeles to ever actually ride a city bus, Keanu Reeves. Good evening. Every year, five features are nominated by Academy members as Best Picture of the Year. Their first choice is always the last to be revealed on Oscar night. Between now and then, we will be reminded who those five are. The first of them is a film of three lurid stories that are skillfully woven into a pulse-pounding entertainment of revenge and redemption. Using words as rivets, images as stilettos, this shocking, brutal, but hilarious adventure is entitled Pulp Fiction. I talk fast, and I need you guys to act fast if you want to get out of this. I'm ready. Let's do it right now, right here. Everybody be cool. This is a robbery. That's how you're going to beat him, Butch. Keep on the rest of me. I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger. Hmm. This doesn't sound like the usual mindless, boring, getting to know you chit-chat. This sounds like you actually have something to say. Is that a fact? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome one of Hollywood's most exciting actresses, Renee Russo. As is the custom, there are five songs nominated for Best Original Song. And as is the tradition, the Academy Awards tries to get the original artist to perform the nominated songs on the telecast. The first of the nominated songs is from the film The Paper. It was written by one of the most original singer-songwriters of our time. Here to perform Make Up Your Mind is Randy Newman.
the market. That little bee got caught up and put in the zoo. Last little bee went where, 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 where? Cause you didn't know what it's supposed to do. Bad news, ladies and gentlemen, while we were gone, Lizzie Gardner's dress expired. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't leave home without it. Thank you. Now, let's keep moving. Tonight's show is being seen in 170 countries, which means that right about now, in dozens of different languages, people are saying, is that Buddy Ebsen? Well, if there's one aspect about the movies that people all over the world can enjoy, it's physical comedy. And here now is a look at the men and women who risk life and limb to make us laugh. We're making motion picture history here. I want quiet. Quiet from everybody. It is my privilege to present the award for best achievement in makeup. The nominees are 
for Ed Wood. Rick Baker, V. Neal, and Yolanda Tusing turned smiling Martin Landau into the aging, scowling star of another generation, Bella Lugosi. For Forrest Gump, Daniel C. Streepick, Hallie Damore, and Judith A. Corey took Principal Sally Field and Tom Hanks over a period of several decades through peace, war, and Savannah, Georgia. I think I'll go home now. For Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, Daniel Parker, Paul Englin, and Carol Hemming went into their workshop to design, fabricate, and then apply a diabolical creature who was brought to monstrous life. And this Frankenstein! The award goes to... Rick Baker, V. Neal, and Yolanda Tucson for Edward. Well, first of all, we'd like to thank the Academy for having this category. Tim Burton, Denise DeNovi, and Touchstone Pictures for making the film. Scott and Larry for their screenplay. All of the actors, but especially Martin for his cooperation and brilliant performance. I'd like to thank these talented women up here with me, as well as all the other makeup and hair people that contributed to Ed Wood. And lastly, I'd like to thank the late, great makeup artist, Jack Pierce. Jack's makeups were the first to inspire me to get into this business where they not only pay and feed you, but honor you for doing something that you truly love. Thank you very much. Love you, sir. Give me a hand here. Hi. I, I have something here I want to show you. Let me just put this down. By the way, I have the feeling I'm not the only one here tonight carrying his rug. <laughs> Can you, you want to help? Just, you're going to love this. Do you mind? You would just come up here and give us a hand? Yeah, do you mind? Just, just come on up. Yeah, come on. This would be great. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, I appreciate it. Tom Hanks, ladies and gentlemen, just roll, roll that out. Roll that out if you can. Just, thank you very much. Would it kill you to have worn a tie? Okay. All right. So, no, you can stay up here. I want, you, I want you to see this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, do me a favor. Don't applaud now until I ask you to applaud. And I don't think you'll have trouble with that. All right. I want to introduce you to somebody. All right, come right out. Hold, hold your applause. Come on. Wait a minute. Come on. Here we go. Oh, my God. Have you ever seen it? This is, this is Sadie. The dog that spins when you applaud. Here we go. Just. What do you think of that? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. Run it. Okay, fine. Just hook her up. Okay. Here you. Go. How about that? Yes, sir. We got us a self-winding dog, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Nice job. Stacy Towns, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! Thanks, Tom. <laughs> no, I'll take care of it. That was just as good as winning something, wasn't it? What a nice have for little Tom Hanks, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm sorry. Folks, here to present the Academy Award for Sound Effects Editing is an actress so talented they've bestowed upon her the heady honor of three names. Please welcome the star of Honeymoon in Vegas and Miami Rhapsody, Sarah Jessica Parker.
For the past several years, somebody has explained what sound effects editing is. That's usually the high point of the evening. But this year, I have some good news and some better news. The good news is that the Academy's Board of Governors, all 36 of them, are ready to come out here and explain what sound effects editing is. The better news is that instead, we're going to show you who the nominees are. Bruce Stambler and John Levesque for Clear and Present Danger. Gloria S. Borders and Randy Tom for Forrest Gump. Stephen Hunter Flick for Speed. And the Oscar goes to Stephen Hunter Flick for Speed. I used to be a musician, and uh, one of the ways we figured out how to make sound effects were to take musical instruments and break them. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to thank the Academy so very much for this award. I'd like to thank a terrific, fabulous crew that put together an extraordinary soundtrack in no time at all. I'd like to thank John Wright for cutting the picture, and I'd like to thank my wife, Judy, who was an editor on the project as well. I'd like to thank Ted Galliano and Kim Cooper, post-production at Fox, and I'd like to thank Jan de Bont. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most creative minds in Hollywood, Mr. Steve Martin. Thank you. Uh, David Letterman's monologue I thought was really funny tonight. Of course, anything would have seemed funny following Arthur Hiller. <laughs> you know, whenever I'm doing one of these big-budget, high-profile Hollywood movies, someone always asks me, what exactly is film editing? And I always reply, how should I know? You're the director. <laughs> but we're here tonight because we love movies. How many memories will we carry with us all our lives because of them? I can still remember sitting in a darkened theater with my arm around 17-year-old Mary Jo Rasmussen trying to get to first base. I can even remember the name of the movie, The Lion King. <laughs> and here are the nominations for film editing this year. Arthur Schmidt for Forrest Gump. Frederick Marks, Steve James, and Bill Haugsey for Hoop Dreams. Sally Menke for Pulp Fiction. Richard Francis Bruce for The Shawshank Redemption. John Wright for Speed. And the Oscar goes to... Arthur Schmidt for Forrest Gump. Well, the taxi driver said it when he said, wow. Uh, Forrest would have known what to say. He probably just would have said, okay, and let it go at that. But I uh, have a few more little things to say. When you're on the receiving end of the work of so many gifted collaborators, you get to come up here and get something like this. And I have to thank them all for making this and Gump happen especially Bob Zemeckis, who stretches himself in the medium of film every time he goes out and makes a film. And in so doing, 
He stretches all of us who have the challenge and the fun and the excitement and the pleasure of working with his amazing talent. Thank you, Bob, and thank you all very much. Sally Field, Oprah Winfrey, and the Oscars were supporting actor right after these words. The second nominee for Best Picture begins in a small southern town with a pair of dirty sneakers, a bus stop, and a box of chocolates. When state-of-the-art visual effects combine with unforgettable characters, the result is magical. Through the innocent eyes of a man not blessed with great intelligence, we are able to view a generation and an era of American history. Through this man with unwavering values and simple determination, we watch the follies and triumphs of our own recent past. I'm proud to present my boy, Forrest. <laughs> Forrest Gump. Try out my sea legs. Well, you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dane. Yes, I know that. You wrote me a letter, you idiot. Well, well, Captain Forrest Gump. I had to see this for myself. <laughs> Ah, the second nominated song is from a film noted for the fact that Arnold Schwarzenegger becomes pregnant. The film was junior. The song is Look What Love Has Done, written by Carol Bayer-Sager, Bayer -Sager, James Newton Howard, James Ingram, and the woman who will be performing the song this evening, Patti Smythe. Here is Look at What Love Has Done. <laughs> Everything 
Academy Award nominee for her film debut in The Color Purple, Oprah Winfrey. The man who co-produced my first movie and who remains a great light in my life tonight receives the Jean Herschelt Award. It is an honor earned only by one whose humanitarian efforts dignify the film community and bring honor to our society. And so it's not given every year. In the past, the Herschelt has been presented to a dozen actors, half a dozen producers, seven executives, one writer-director, and yes, one agent. This year, a musician has qualified for the honor, and I have the wonderful privilege of ratifying the Academy Board of Governors' unanimous choice. He is the maestro his colleagues call Q, I call friend, and the world calls Mr. Jones, Mr. Quincy Jones. He is no stranger to awards. Q has been showered with them as a composer, conductor, and instrumentalist. But as far as the kid from Chicago has gone, he has not forgotten the struggle, nor his determination to help others realize their potential. May our children learn to sing each other's songs and dance each other's dances. He contributes his energy to students, his encouragement to youth, and his support to programs that reach out to youth at risk through President Clinton's Committee on the Arts and Humanities. Through his Listen Up Foundation, Quincy works to inspire young people to embrace the values of work and education. He has nourished the vital efforts of the Urban League, City of Hope, Loyola, Howard, Brandeis, Seattle, Wesleyan, and Hebrew universities. The NAACP, Chicago's Northside Center for Child Development, Los Angeles Arts Council. The list goes on and on, and so does the beat. One, two. Q's recording, We Are the World, the best selling single of all times, raised $53 million for famine relief in Ethiopia. His longtime opposition to apartheid and his passionate support of freedom and equality for all people everywhere has, like his music, brought humanity to all he's touched. So now you know why I am so proud to give this Jean Herschelt Humanitarian Award to my friend, I just love him, Mr. Quincy Jones. Thank you. It's nice to feel important. <laughs> I think maybe a bit more important to feel not be nice though. This moment, this evening, the spot where I stand tonight was not my destination when I was young and full of vinegar. I did not engineer this journey. To tell you the truth, I don't think I could even see this far. And now that I'm older and full of wonder, I can see that maybe other forces were at the wheel. You may have seen my mother Sarah in my music and witnessed the laughter and tears of my children, my family. They were the pillars beneath this life of mine. Theirs is the humanity reflected in this moment. You may be familiar with countless of shoulders that I stood upon to just see where I might go. They were the pillars of, that were beneath my life. Theirs is the humanity reflected in this moment. I also hope you can see reflections of the gift of friendship 
so generously given to me by Benny Carter, Sidney Poitier, Mo Austin, happy birthday, Mo, <laughs> Clarence Avant, and Steve Ross, my gurus of givingness, and a multitude of others who too have been pillars beneath this life of mine. I accept this great honor in their names on this, the proudest day of my life. Thank you, governors of the Academy, for including me in such prestigious company. And you Americans out there, please join the rising support for the National Endowment for the Arts. Each act of creation can be another powerful pillar beneath this life of this wonderful and troubled nation of ours. Who knows, the next artist we support may one day stand before you as I do now, humble, proud, cool, and so thankful. Thank you all. Curtis and Tim Allen will join us next on the Academy Awards. Congratulations, men. We're glad to have you in the Army. Thanks! What? Excuse me, sir. Is green the only color these come in? Hey, Bob Fibber! Bob, what do you do? I'm in artillery! Thank you, Bob. Isn't we play anything for you? Anything! Just play it loud, okay? He's in arms! an old expression, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Well, in the land of film, the one-eyed man is also king if that eye is looking through the viewfinder of a camera and bringing all his skill to bear on the look and the feel of the film he is shooting. Uh, this king goes by another title, cinematographer. And tonight we recognize five of them for the outstanding work they have done this past year in bringing their vision to the screen. And the nominees for cinematography are Don Burgess for Forrest Gump. And the Oscar goes to... <laughs> Should I go back and do that again? No. <laughs> the Oscar goes to John Toll for Legends of the Fall. Thank you very much. Don Burgess, uh, Roger Deakins, uh, Owen Roisman, and Peter Sabinski were the other cinematographers. Uh, uh, this is truly an honor to be here this evening, and I, I must share this with a wonderful cast, a fantastic crew, uh, director Ed, Zweig, uh, Ed Zwick, uh, production designer Lily Kilbert, all who contributed so much to this picture. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I figured out how this works. When you win your award, you come up on stage and you just keep talking until you hear the music. The 1995 Academy Awards for Science and Technical Achievement were presented at a lovely dinner three weeks ago at the Regent Beverly Wilshire Hotel. Nominees were treated to a choice of roast beef or snapper. <laughs> also, live music in a cash bar. 
All this was the Academy's way of saying, you people are too dull to be on the real show. <laughs> Here now with some highlights of those awards is Arnold Schwarzenegger's stunning co-star from True Lies, Jamie Lee Curtis. of hosting the banquet honoring the extraordinary contributions of the scientific and technical community. It was a wonderful affair, and we had a lot more fun than you are. And even though we may not understand precisely what the award winners accomplished, you and I, the movie-going public, are all the beneficiaries of their vision and dedication. During the evening, many awards were given out, and we mentioned two in particular this evening as the winners of the highest honor the Academy can bestow, the Oscar. The first Oscar went to a father and son for their concept and development of the ultimate electronic blue screen compositing process. First to accept was the son, Paul Vlahos. I'm going to cherish this award and this moment forever. Thank you. Next came the father, the prior Oscar winner, Thank you, thank you, thank you. The other Oscar went to the Eastman Kodak Company for the development and production of an exceptional quality film, Eastman EXR Color Film 5244. Accepting was the chairman, president, and CEO, Mr. George Fisher. Kodak moment, folks. Uh, thank you. Thank you uh, to the Academy, uh, to its great president, Arthur Hiller. Um, to the scientific and technical committee, uh, thank you on behalf of Eastman Kodak. The Academy, the Academy congratulates all of the men and not one woman who were honored that night and thanks them for their ongoing quest for the next frontier. Bye. Please welcome the star of The Santa Claus, Tim Allen. Hi there, this is uh, my first appearance at the Academy Awards. Oddly, I was uh, not nominated for my delicate portrayal of the beloved and weight challenge character Santa Claus. <laughs> so with that in mind, I thought I'd take this opportunity on worldwide television to promote my personal political causes. <laughs> Sadly, I uh, have no personal political causes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was a little depressed about this morning, but my mom called and mom can cheer me up like nobody else. She goes, Timmy, life is like a box of hand grenades. You touch anything and you're gonna die. <laughs> I'm especially pleased to present the category of live action short films because back in 1986, my short film won an award at the American Film Institute. You all remember The Last Days of Moje Lake? <laughs> Probably not. Short films, sadly, are not seen enough, which makes them even more special to me. The people who make them do it for the love of the craft. And the nominations for the best achievement in live action short films are Franz Kafka's It's a Wonderful Life, Peter Capaldi and Ruth Kenley Letts. <laughs> Kangaroo Court, Sean Austin and Christine Aston. <laughs> On Hope, Joe Beth Williams, Michelle McGuire. <laughs> Sura, Paul Unwin and Nick Vivian. <laughs> Trevor, Peggy Reisky and Randy Stone. And the Oscar goes to, it's a tie. Oh, mon dieu. 
Fred Kafka, it's a wonderful life. Peter Capaldi, Ruth Kenley Letts, and Trevor Peggy Reiske and Randy Stone. Trevor first came to life as a stage piece, conceived after our wonderful writer James Lacine heard a report on NPR about teen suicide and learned that approximately one third of all teens who kill themselves are gay. We made our film for anyone who's ever made, felt like an outsider. It celebrates all those who make it through difficult times and mourns those who didn't. In honoring us, the Academy honors everyone who so generously supported our project. Our thanks to them and my husband, Josh, who helps make all things possible. This project was a perfect experience for us. From the beginning, um, it seemed to be blessed. Uh, everybody we asked to help said yes. Peggy, James, and myself wanted to send a message. Our cast, crew, and contributors made it possible. We want to thank our family and friends, Alan Landsberg, Peter Roth, Charlie Goldstein, and especially Jody, whose love, support, and encouragement inspires and helped us achieve our best. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. This is very, very thrilling for us. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, thank the Academy, and I'd also like to very much thank the Scottish Film Production Fund and BBC Scotland, who backed our film with so much goodwill and generosity. Uh, I'd also like to thank my husband, Crispin Letts, who makes everything possible for me. And I'm now gonna pass you over to Peter. Okay, thank thanks. You. I've got 19 seconds, a very short speech. I would like to thank everybody who worked on the film, gave them, gave them themselves a huge amount of uh, talent and generosity. Richard E. Grant, who was fabulous. Ruth Kenley Lett, uh, who's a fabulous producer. Uh, and uh, Elaine Collins, who is the real creative dynamo behind it all. Uh, and my, my mum and dad. And the Academy. Thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, ah what a party! <laughs> what a flurry! <laughs> oh, that's rich! Ah, you gotta love these Shriners conventions! <laughs> what a lollapalooza! What a. Mm, that's funny. Well, I'll be <gasps> Jody Foster! Tom Hanks! Ooh, ooh! Sharon Stone! Boy, what a pledge drive! Is those Shrine Auditorium? The Academy Award! The nominees for the best achievement in animated short films are... The Big Story, Tim Watts and David Stoughton. Bob's Birthday. Alison Snowden and David Fine. The Janitor, Nessa Schwartz. The Monk and the Fish, Michael Dudok DeVitt. Triangle, Erica Russell. And the Oscar goes to... Hurry up, hurry up! Bob's Birthday, Alison Snowden and David Fine. Congratulations! I think I'm just gonna stand here and watch the clock count down. It'll be easier. Uh, thank you to the Academy. <laughs> We'd also like to thank Channel 4 Television in Britain and Claire Kitson in particular for commissioning the film and for supporting British animation so much over the years. We'd also like to thank the National Film Board of Canada, Barry McLean and David Verrill for co-producing with us. Um, also thanks to Andy Hamilton, Harry Enfield, 
Janet Perlman, Patrick Godfrey, and everyone who worked so hard on the film over two years. And all our friends and family for all their inspiration and support. And most importantly, we'd like to uh, dedicate this award to the memory of our dear friend Mike Gribble, who sadly isn't here tonight. Thank you very, very much. Susan Sarandon, Tim Robbins, and a special production featuring nominated songs from The Lion King next on Oscar Night. Get your pies for the great pie fight. favorite stars of some of the world's all-time favorite films, Academy Award winner Gregory Peck. Good evening. The third of our Best Picture nominees takes us back to the 1950s, a time when millions of Americans were enthralled by television's weekly game shows until the deception of 21 was exposed. In the aftermath of the scandal, the lives of some of the players who comprise, compromise their honor in a quest for ratings, easy money, and instant fame were forever changed. Quiz show is a work of integrity and conviction. Here is a scene. Well, there's a problem, Charlie. I found another contestant, a man named James Snodgrass, and he says he got the answers, too. You sure these people are telling the truth? He put all the questions in a sealed envelope and sent them to himself, registered mail. That was two days before he appeared on the show. Doesn't prove anything. Hey, you don't have to be a genius to connect the dots. Well, don't connect them through me. Hey, don't treat me like I'm some member of your damn fan club. Are you telling me everybody got the answers but you? You're so persistent, you know, I really envy that. Was it just the money, Charlie? You'll forgive me, but anyone who thinks money is ever just money couldn't have much of it. Charlie, you want to insult me, fine, but you can't envy me at the same time. If someone offered you all this money to be on some rigged quiz show, instant fame, the works, would you do it? No. Oh. Of course not. No, no, throw the whole thing in the cover of time. Dave Garraway, 50,000 a year to read poetry on television. Would you do it? No. And I would. You know, I was, um, I was thinking that was a very nice entrance that uh, Jamie Lee Curtis made on the, the helicopter. And uh, it was a very nice reception. And it occurred to me, this is the uh, second award show in a month at which she has uh, received a warm hand. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here to present the award for art direction is one of Hollywood's most talented couples. Please welcome Tim Robbins and Susan Sarandon. Pay attention. I'm sure they're pissed off about something. Actually, Dave, you're right. Um, I'd just like to take a brief moment of your time. Uh, there's something we'd like to say. Susan? The nominees for Best Achievement in Art Direction are... Bullets Over Broadway. Art Direction by Santa Laquasto. Set Direction by Susan Boda. Forrest Gump. Art direction by Rick Carter, set direction by Nancy Hay. Interview with a Vampire. Art direction by Dante Ferretti, set decoration by Francesca Lo Schiavo. Oh, that was so good the way you said that. Legends of the Fall. Art direction by Lily Kilvert, set direction by Dory Cooper. The Madness of King George, art direction by Ken Adams, set decoration by Carolyn Scott. And the Oscar goes to Ken Adam from The Madness of King George and for set decoration, Carolyn Scott.
Well, I'm deeply honored by the Academy, and I'm really very, very moved. I would like to thank, in particular, a very wonderful first-time film director, Nicholas Heitner, <laughs> who had an incredible concept, and also, obviously, Alan Bennett with an incredible screenplay. And the whole cast of uh, The Madness of George, who were superb. And it was an, an incredible ad adventure for me to work on this film. Thank you, all of you. Gentlemen, welcome one of the screen's great adventure heroes, Steven Seagal. In Hollywood, as we have come to learn, nothing is impossible. And nowhere is this more vividly demonstrated than in lab shops, studios, of the geniuses who create visual effects. Here's a small example of the work of the nominees in the three films that earned them nominations for visual effects. In Forrest Gump, nominees Ken Ralston, George Murphy, Stephen Rosenbaum, and Alan Hall were given the task of removing the legs of actor Gary Sinise. Instead of resorting to surgery, they had Gary wear specially designed blue socks and remove the legs by computer. In Mask, starring Jim Carrey, nominees Scott Squires, Steve Williams, Tom Berrettino, and John Farhat used their own remarkable artistry and their crafty computers to create some truly eye-popping special effects. In True Lies, Arnold Schwarzenegger took to the skies to do battle with the bad guys, using the largest green screen stage ever assembled. Nominees John Bruno, Thomas Fisher, Jacques Strohweiss, and Patrick McClung digitally combined aerial footage and sensational stunts to create these breathtaking scenes. And the Oscar goes to Ken Ralston, George Murphy, Stephen Rosenbaum, and Alan Hall for Forrest Gump. Yes. I'd like to thank the Academy. It was great being a film magician uh, on Gump, working for the amazing Bob Zemeckis. I'd also like to thank my wife, Robin, uh, Debbie DeNice, Vance Piper, Pat Turner, Mark Holmes, and of course... Uh, and of course, we'd like to uh, thank the incredible crew at ILM that, uh, whose perseverance over the course of nearly a year uh, made Bob Zemeckis' vision look absolutely real. Those guys really did it. We thank him. We especially want to be sure to thank Doug Chang for his fabulous art directions and putting new words into the mouths of old presidents, John Schlag for his great crowd control, and Annie Calancini for minding, helping us mind our peas and carrots, and of course, my wife, Megan Jones. Charles Newworth, Joe Montenegro, a great special effects crew, my wife, Suzanne, and the creative mind of Bob Zemeckis. Thank you. Thank you. You know, someone once said that acting is the enchanted wand that turns words into magic. Thankfully, we've had that person dragged out to the parking lot and beaten. <laughs> I'm talking about words like, I could have been a contender. Here's looking at you, kid. Life is like a box of chocolates. All shining examples of how a few simple words become cinematic legend. Last year, as the global film community knows, I made my big screen debut in a little something called Cabin Boy. 
And I, too, was lucky enough to turn words into magic. Watch closely. Would you like to buy a monkey? Why don't we enjoy that again? Would you like to buy a monkey? But you know, as with all great work, I was not the first or only choice. Here now, take a look at some of my fellow actors who auditioned for this plum role. Would you like to buy a monkey? Would you like to buy a monkey? I can do one bigger. Want to buy a donkey? A monkey. I'm confused. I, I thought I was playing the monkey. What's the matter? You don't like monkeys? I like monkey. You like monkey? Listen here. I'm not going to ask you again. I'm going to ask you one more time. You want to buy the monkey or not? Huh? Whew. And I can do it in German or anything. <laughs> I want you to buy this monkey. Could you clear my eye line, please, back there? Could everybody get out of my eye line? Thank you. <laughs> Would you like to buy a monkey? Mexican monkey, happy. Woo! Hey, mister, wanna buy a monkey? Would you like to buy a monkey? <laughs> you wanna buy a monkey? Would you like to buy a monkey? Monkey waiting for a phone call. Mm -hmm. Monkey! Monkey after a big meal. Oh, my. <laughs> well, how about that? <laughs> so you see how truly blessed I was. Ladies and gentlemen, here in my right hand, I have a copy of tonight's top ten list. Let's get right to it. From the home office in Hollywood, California. Tonight's top 10 list category, top 10 signs the movie you're watching will not win an Academy Award. <laughs> top 10 signs the movie you're watching will not win an Academy Award. Here we go, number 10. It still has the time code from the camcorder on it. <laughs> number nine, any combination of the words police and academy in the title. Number eight, it's a movie about the Civil War and General Grant is wearing Dockers. <laughs> Number seven, you hear someone yelling, focus, and you realize it's the director. <laughs> uh, Number six, it's a beautifully made documentary about two kids in the inner city trying to realize their dream of playing professional basketball. Number five, the last 20 minutes is a shot of Richie from Local 262 eating donuts. Well, <laughs> God bless him. Uh, number four, your date had to jam a hypodermic needle full of adrenaline into your heart just to keep you awake. Uh, number three, before it starts, you hear, thank you for coming to Lowe's. Sit back and relax, this movie blows. <laughs> number two, nude scene with Uma Thurman replaced by nude scene with Strom Thurmond. And the number one sign, the movie you're watching, will not win an Academy Award. Four words, Dom DeLuise as Gandhi. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce the man responsible for all the wonderful live music on tonight's program. Once again, occupying a place of honor beneath the stage, <laughs> returning for his 11th year as musical director, the maestro and Academy Award winner, Bill Conti. You know, last year, Americans were dazzled by the singing, dancing, and acting talents of a wonderfully exciting newcomer. I'm referring, of course, to United States Attorney General Janet Reno. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> no, of course not, but boy, wouldn't that be something if it were? <laughs> this gifted newcomer is the talented actress who played Tina Turner in What's Love Got to Do With It, Miss Angela Bassett, ladies and gentlemen. It's time now to present two more songs nominated this year for Best Original Song. They're both from the fertile minds of Tim Rice and Elton John, and they're both from the new animated classic, The Lion King. Choreographed by Debbie Allen, here are Ernie Sabella and David Allen Greer to sing Hakuna Matata and Hinton Battle and Lebo Im to perform the inspiring Circle of Life. And thinking, step into the sun. There's more to see than can ever be seen. More to do than can ever be done. There's far too much to take in here. More to find than can ever be found. But the sun's rolling high Through that sapphire sky Keeps great and small All the endless round And the sun
and Samuel L. Jackson join us next for Jack Nicholson on the 67th Academy Awards. This is fact, not fiction. The two stars of Pulp Fiction, Oscar nominees John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson. Sam. You know what they call a documentary in Paris? You mean they don't call it a documentary? No, they call it Le Documentary. Le Documentary. <laughs> well, do, 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 do you know what they call a, a feature? I don't know. I didn't see a feature. Well, well, in this category, we honor some sensitive work that contains wit, substance, and truth. The nominees for Best Achievement in Documentary Short Subjects are... Blues Highway, Vince DiPerzio and Bill Guttentag. 89 millimeters from Europe, Marcel Lezinski. School of Assassins, Robert Richter. Straight from the Heart, Dee Mossbacher and Francis Reed. A Time for Justice, Charles Guggenheim. Peril for Pictures and the Oscar goes to A Time for Justice, Charles Guggenheim. To my wonderful editor, Kathy Shields, to Michael Bacon for his wonderful music, to my beautiful, wonderful daughter, Grace, for her production. But perhaps most of all, we would agree to the Southern Poverty Law Center in Montgomery, Alabama. And Morris Dees, who leads that, Sarah Bullard and Richard Cohn, who take their life in their hands each year to fight bigotry and hatred in this country and to those people who fought the battle for voting in this country, who died and suffered, but we remember by this. Thank you. So you want to stick around for the next award? Sure. All this right. is for the best achievement in documentary features, which unlike documentary short subjects are longer. And the nominees are Complaints of a Dutiful Daughter, Deborah Hoffman. D-Day Remembered, Charles Guggenheim. Freedom on My Mind, Connie Field and Marilyn Mulford. A Great Day in Harlem, Gene Bach. Maya Lynn, A Strong Clear Vision, Frida Lee Mock and Terry Sanders. And the Oscar goes to... Maya Lynn, A Strong, Clear Vision, Frida Lee Mock, and Terry Sanders.
I'd like to thank the Academy for this wonderful honor and its members and their hard work, um, particularly in recognizing a film which is about the power of art to heal and particularly the difference that one young woman can make. I'd like to particularly thank the subject of this film, Maya Lin, for her extraordinary gift to this country in designing the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. It's an idea that would not have happened had it not been for the courage and sacrifice of Vietnam veterans. And I'd like to thank the veterans for their service to this country, and particularly two vets, um, Jan Scruggs and Robert Dubeck, who had tenacity against great political opposition to build that beautiful memorial. I need to thank some great crew members, wonderful team, uh, great cinematographers, ba Don Lenzer and Eddie Meritz, um, composer Robert, uh, Charles Bernstein, uh, William T. Cartwright, my daughters Jessica and Brittany Sanders, <laughs> and um, let's see, time's up, <laughs> I think, yeah, time's up. NEA, great. <laughs> Our next presenter successfully seduced two of Hollywood's sexiest leading men, Dennis Quaid and Al Pacino. I'm referring, of course, to United States Attorney General Janet Reno. <laughs> oh, no! It's not Janet Reno at all! Boy, wouldn't that be something if it were? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the lovely, talented, and beguiling Ellen Barkin. For centuries, philosophers have busied themselves with questions like, what is the sound of one hand clapping? If a tree falls in the forest and no one is there to hear it, does it still make a noise? How about if a tree falls on Forrest Gump? Does he still keep on talking? <laughs> While philosophers have wrestled with the esoteric properties of sound, the sound engineers have wrestled with the real properties of sound. The Oscar nominees for sound are <laughs> Donald O. Mitchell, Michael Herbeck, Frank A. Montano, and Arthur Rochester for clear and present danger. Randy Tom, Tom Johnson, Dennis Sands, and William B. Kaplan for Forrest Gump. Paul Massey, David Campbell, Christopher David, and Douglas Ganton for Legends of the Fall. Robert J. Litt, Elliot Tyson, Michael Herbeck, and Willie Burton for The Shawshank Redemption. Greg Landecker, Steve Maslow, Bob Beamer, and David R. B. McMillan for Speed. And the Oscar goes to... Greg Landecker, Steve Maslow, Bob Beamer, and David R. B. McMillan for Speed. I'd like to thank the Academy members for your vote of confidence. A special tank thanks to the film's biggest supporter, Mr. Ted Galliano at 20th Century Fox, to a man that gave rush hour traffic a new meaning, our director, Jan DeBont, Skywalker Sound, Universal Studios for the use of the facilities, Stephen Flick, Weddington Productions, Gary and Greg Gerlich, Vision Tracks, our backup team, Sergio Reyes, Tenny Sebastian, Gary Rogers, and Ezra Dwick, and to my lovely wife of 18 years, Catherine Landacre, thank you for the patience and understanding with all the long hours. I love you. Thank you to, for the, thanks to the Academy this, for this award. Thank you very much. Steve Barman, Kevin Patterson, and my wife, Patty. Unique, original, his nationality is actor, two-time Oscar winner, Jack Nicholson. Uh, 
Uh, this year, the Academy Board of Directors has voted to present the honorary Oscar to one of the movie's great visionaries, uh, Michelangelo Antonioni. <laughs> Most movies celebrate the ways we connect with one another. The films of this master mourn the failures to connect. In the empty, silent spaces of the world, he has found metaphors that illuminate the silent places of our hearts, and found in them, too, a strange and terrible beauty. Austere, elegant, enigmatic, and haunting. Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Michelangelo Antonioni. Nice. I too. <laughs> it's it's very beautiful to receive this award, and also it's very beautiful to receive all this love. And sometimes words are not needed because of this love. Michelangelo always went beyond words to meet silence, the mystery and the power of silence. But tonight, I think he wants to say something. <laughs> <laughs> he says, grazie, thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. More stars and more comedy with Hugh Grant, Andy McDowell, and a performance by Elton John. Stay with the Oscars. Would you please give me a hand? I'm sort of stuck. You've got a lot of animal magnetism. Ah! Hi. Hi. Do you like fried chicken? Fried chicken very much. So do I. I did. You feel like you want to throw up? Okay. You have much more hair than you know, so my dad. Well, nice of you to notice. I'm a kid. That's my job.
Hi, and welcome back. Uh, during the commercial, we gave out the awards for Best Actor, Best Actress, and Best Picture. Uh, just kidding, Ashley, those should be presented sometime, oh, I guess just before noon tomorrow. You know, when a comedian works with a straight man, you have a comedy team. When that straight man becomes a brilliant comedian himself, well, then you have a great comedy team with precision timing and pinpoint choreography. Great comedy teams have made us laugh since movies began. Hey! Don't try to get in here again. Boy, this picture business is tougher to get into than I figured. Let there be wine. And women. And a song. And women. Hit up. I don't think you've ever been properly handled. Oh. Oh, my darling. Oh, my oh. darling. Are you having another nightmare? Uh, you heard what the man said. We are in the army. What? Go away from me. Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. He's on. Oh, no, no, no. You no. don't know where I've been. You didn't see me. I didn't call, and I'm not here. I am not here. Yes, he's here. You know, Gracie, I'm beginning to think that there's nothing up here. Uh-huh, George. You're self-conscious. I can't keep this dicky down, Ricky. <laughs> That's right. We're bad. Uh-huh. Remarkable bird, the Norwegian blue, isn't it? It's still dead. You know, way down underneath, I'm honest. Yeah, but on top, you're a rat. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Ah! Okay, it's in. Oscar-nominated film Four Weddings and a Funeral, Hugh Grant and Andy McDowell. Our category this evening is original score. Uh, sorry, sorry, was, it was uh, original score, um, but it has, has now been changed. I don't know if you, you possibly weren't listening to the chat from the Academy in the wings there, um, but the, the, this category has been slightly altered this year, ladies and gentlemen. And um, it, it now goes, let me get this right, um, best original score or performance by a British actor in a fluffy romantic comedy set in the south of England. Oh, uh. Hugh, honey, you're bitter. No, not bitter, not bitter, I'm not bitter. I'm, 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 I'm not, not, not in the least bitter, I'm just um, interested in the way it's done. And, um, and, and the nominees are Alan Silvestri for Forrest Gump. Elliot, Elliot Goldenthal for Interview with a Vampire. Hans Zimmer for The Lion King. Thomas Newman for Little Women. And Thomas Newman for The Shawshank Redemption. And uh, the Oscar goes to... Um... You better give me that. Yeah. And the Oscar goes to Hans Zimmer for The Lion King. I'd like to thank the fluffiest actor in show business. No, um, I wrote a speech, but I realized it's so boring, so I'm not going to do it. I'd like to thank my wife, because she's my best friend. I'd like to cool, because I did The Lion King. Uh, I'd like to thank the directors, the, um, Rob Minkoff, Roger Alice. I'd like to thank the nicest producer in the business, um, Don Hahn. I'm incredibly nervous. I tell you what, writing a score is much easier than this. Thank you. Just let me go, OK? chooses to appear, this Academy Award-winning actor is pronounced star in any language, presenting Mr. Jeremy Irons.
Whenever I sit down in front of a foreign language film, I get a thrill as the first subtitle appears. For I know I'm about to be transported into lives far from my own. Yet, by the closing titles, I'm always amazed that though our language may be different, our desires, our needs, and aspirations are the same. This year's nominees for foreign language films come to America from Belgium, Cuba, Russia, Taiwan, and from the Republic of Macedonia, the country the filmmakers call Macedonia and the UN calls the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Controversies notwithstanding, all these films are stunning reminders that we are fast becoming one world. Watching their cinematic art, it's impossible to ignore our universal humanity. Love and hatred, tenderness and cruelty, laughter and tears. From that rich palette of emotions, the Academy has chosen these nominees for Best Foreign Language Film of 1994. From Macedonia, Before the Rain, Milcho Manchevsky, director. From Russia, Burnt by the Sun, Nikita Mikalkov, director. From Taiwan, Eat, Drink, Man, Woman, Ang Lee, director. From Belgium, Farinelli Il Castrato, Gerard Corbillo, director. From Cuba, Strawberry and Chocolate, Thomas Gutierrez Alea and Juan Carlos Tabillo, directors. And the Oscar goes to Russia for Burns by the Sun, accepting the award, the director, Nikita Mikalkov. I'm sorry I didn't speak English, never speak English on the stage. Uh, I want to thank all my friends who worked with me. My uh, script writer, Rustam Regenbekov. <laughs> Great composer, Eduard Artemiev. My co-producer, Vladimir Sidov, <laughs> Nicole Kahn, and all my friends who work with me. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, Marcello Mastroianni said in uh, uh, Fellini's film, great, uh, great film, uh, <laughs> Eight and a Half, I want to say the truth, which I don't know, but which, which I tried to find, me too. I want to try, uh, I want to say I, the truth, which I don't know. And maybe I want to say the truth, cruel truth, but I'm absolutely sure that the cruel truth without love is a lie. And my daughter. She's my actress. And first time in my life, I didn't have problem with actress. And now to introduce the final nominee for Best Original Song, here's the reason guys didn't mind being dragged by their wives to see Legends of the Fall. Please welcome 
Julia Ormond. For the second time in the history of the Academy, three songs from the same film have been nominated for Oscars in the category Original Song. To sing the fifth and final nomination, Can You Feel the Love Tonight, from The Lion King, written by Elton John and Tim Rice, is the composer, Elton John. To the rush of day When the heat of a rolling wind Can't be turned away An enchanted moment And it sees me through It's enough for this restless warrior Just to be with you It's enough to make kings and vagabonds believe the very Sylvester Stallone, Clint Eastwood, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Tom Hanks, and the Oscar for Best Actress on Oscar Night 95. Making his sixth appearance as a presenter on the Academy Awards, two-time Oscar nominee, Sylvester Stallone.
I'm happy to be here to honor these composers and lyricists who have been singled out for recognition this year. To refresh your memories, here are the nominees for original song. From the Lion King, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Music by Elton John, lyrics by Tim Rice. From the Lion King, Circle of Life, Elton John, lyrics by Tim Rice. From the Lion King, Hakuna Matata, music by Elton John, lyrics by Tim Rice. From Junior, Look What Love Has Done, music and lyrics by Carol Bearsager, James Newton Howard, James Ingram, and Patti Smythe. From the paper, Make Up Your Mind, music and lyrics by Randy Newman. And the winner of the Oscar is... Elton John and Tim Rice, can you feel the love tonight? Many thanks to everyone at Disney, and in particular, as it's a musical thing, Mr. Hans Zimmer. I'd also like to thank Dennis Compton, a childhood hero of mine. Over to Elton. Thank you very much. This is such an exciting night. Um, I'd like to thank the members of the Academy for this incredible honor. To, uh, to Hans Zimmer, who did a wonderful job with the songs, to everybody at Disney. Uh, to my parents who are here tonight, to David, to John Reed, um, to my friends in Utah, and everyone who worked on this most enjoyable project. This is an incredible honor for me. Um, I'd like to dedicate this award to my grandmother, Ivy Sewell. She died last week, and she was the one that sat me down at the piano when I was three and made me play. So I'm accepting this in her honor. Thank you very much. Love Affair is both the name of the film and the relationship the film camera has with its star, Annette Benning. I am pleased to remind you of the fourth candidate for Best Picture of the Year. It's the one in which an attractive nubile beauty encounters a handsome, marriage-shy bachelor at one wedding after another. This cheerful series of witty escapades spins a lavish comedy of manners that returns audiences to the sly pleasures of British cinema humor at its best. Here is a slice of cake from four weddings and a funeral. Oh, hello. Hi. Oh, uh, you want one of these? Oh, thank you. Um, I'm <laughs> Charles. <laughs> hello, dear John. How are you? How are you? Good, yeah. Uh, this is, um... Carrie. Carrie. Right. Delighted, I'm John. Hi, John. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, how's that, how's that gorgeous girlfriend of yours? Oh, uh, she's no longer my girlfriend. Ah, oh, dear. Still, I wouldn't get too gloomy about it. Rumor has it she never stopped bonking old Toby Delisle, just in case you didn't work out. <laughs> She is now my wife. <laughs> excellent, that was excellent. Congratulations. Excuse me. Uh, any kids or anything, John? No. You know, great comedies are that rare combination of hilarious one-liners, snappy comebacks, and crackling wit. Now, let's take a look at some of Hollywood's funniest comedians doing what they do best. One morning, I shot an elephant in my pajamas. How he got in my pajamas, I don't know. Give me a number from one to ten. Eleven. Say off. How do you feel, man? I think the Pepto-Bismol helped. Two martinis, please. Very dry. How'd you know what I drank? Oh, you want one, too? Dinner at eight, Harold. You want a leg or a breast? Peel me. Yes, ma'am. Peel me a grape. Shall I kiss you now, or do you want me to tease you for a while? You're not too smart, are you? I like that in a man. There are no great men, Foster. There's only men. Excuse me while I whip this out. No tongues. Must you flirt? Oh, I don't have to, but I find it natural. Suppress it. You ever been in love? No, I've been a bartender all my life. Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> Aren't you? I have the diamonds. They're my 
must be worth their weight in gold. Would you do me a favor, Helen? What? Drop dead splatter pot. Don't you love me anymore? Certainly I love you. Don't you spread that child. Well, he's not going to tell me I don't love him. I'm going to take a bath. Helen left the media. I was just thinking what an interesting concept it is to eliminate the writer from the artistic process. We can just get rid of these actors and directors. Maybe we got something here. Another Academy Award winner returns to announce more returns. Ladies and gentlemen, the distinguished Sir Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, before we heard those very funny lines a moment ago, uh, which issued from the actors' mouths, they were laboriously formed in the writers' minds. And those who act are enthralled to those who write. And I am just pleased to be here tonight to present the Screenwriting Awards. And there are two categories. First, the screenplay written directly for the screen. And the nominees are Woody Allen and Douglas McGrath for Bullets Over Broadway. Richard Curtis for Four Weddings and a Funeral. Francis Waltz and Peter Jackson for Heavenly Creatures. Quentin Tarantino and Roger Avery for Pulp Fiction. Christoph Piesewitz and Christoph Gieslowski for Red. And the Oscar goes to... Quentin Tarantino and Roger Avery for Pulp Fiction. Thanks. Uh, this has been a very strange year. I can definitely say that. Um, you know what? I was trying to think. Um, I think this is probably the only award I'm going to win here tonight. So I was trying to think. Maybe I should just say a whole lot of stuff right here, right now. Just get it all on my system. Because no, no, I thought about no. all year <laughs> long, everything building up and everything. And just blow it all just tonight. Just, just say everything. But I'm not. Thanks. <laughs> I want to thank my beautiful wife, my wife, Gretchen, who I love more than anything in the world. And I really have to take a pee right now, so I'm going to go. Thank you. <laughs> uh, scholars have long argued about whether the plays of William Shakespeare were written by others. They've also debated whether it is more difficult to write an original screenplay or to adapt one from other work, whatever. Wow. Uh, nominees uh, for the best screenplay based on material previously produced or published are Eric Roth for Forrest Gump, based on a novel by Winston Groom. Alan Bennett for The Madness of King George, based on his stage play The Madness of King George III. Uh, Robert Benton for Nobody's Fool, based on the novel by Richard Russell. Uh, Paul Antonazio for Quiz Show, based on the book Remembering America, voice from the 60s by Richard W. Goodwin. Uh, Frank Dalmont for The Shawshank Redemption, based on the short novel Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption by Stephen King. And the Oscar goes to Eric Roth for Forrest Gump. believe this. Well, I'm going to shorten my speech considerably. Three whole paper. I'm a very lucky man. Um, I'm just blessed. Lucky to have an agent like the sublime Jane Sindel. Lucky to have a dear friend and producer like Wendy Feinerman who moved mountains. Lucky to work for Paramount Studios, Sherry Lansing, John Goldwyn, and a writer's best friend, Michelle Manning. 
Lucky to have the majestic actor Tom Hanks, who gave Forrest his heart, his memorable voice, and such great dignity. Lucky to have the remarkable director Bob Zemeckis, who gave Forrest his sense of humor, its irony, its style, and its simple eloquence. Lucky to be the son of Mimi and Leon Roth, who are up there somewhere, who gave me their love for movies and their love for life. Lucky to have known Linda. Lucky to have all my wonderful children growing straight and tall, Vanessa and Mark and Joshua and Juliet, the great Samantha, my boy Jeffrey and little Alec. And luckily, the <laughs> and lucky to be married to the bluest eyes around, Deborah Greenfield, who gives me so much joy and always keeps me honest. To paraphrase Forrest, I knew a good thing when he saw it. I may not be the smartest man around, but I know what love is. I sure do. Thank you. Please welcome three-time Academy Award nominee Sigourney Weaver. On a night when we celebrate comedy, it's only fitting that we quote an Academy Award-winning actor, a gentleman just barely brushing the century mark in age, who said, I wake up in the morning, pick up the paper, and turn to the obituary page. If I don't see my name, I get out of bed. <laughs> that gentleman, of course, is George Burns. And happily for all of us, and for him, he is still getting out of bed with admirable regularity. But sadly, this has been a tough year for our industry. We've lost some of our most remarkable artists and artisans. Although we will no longer have the personal pleasure of their company or the benefit of their talents, we will have their work in the form of the films they made, labored over, and took great pride and joy in presenting. Here's just a sampling of the many this year who were gone too soon. They were gifted, they were caring, they were legends. You know, I've had to take a pee since 6.15. You don't hear me whining about it. <laughs> I'm going to finish up, too. <laughs> Our next presenter is the bigger-than-life star of such blockbusters as The Terminator, Total Recall, and True Lies. But ladies and gentlemen, to me, 
He'll always be just my lifting buddy down at the gym. <laughs> Please welcome one of the most popular film actors on the planet and the only man named Schwarzenegger ever allowed to sleep in Ted Kennedy's guest room, Arnold Schwarzenegger. The Irving Thalberg Award honors people who have devoted their lives to producing movies of lasting value. It's named after a man who presided over a vast studio during Hollywood's golden age. This year, for the first time, he goes to an actor-producer, a man who presides over his own very small company. In the last three decades, he has made 35 films through it, starting in 33 of them and directing 20 of them himself. Two years ago, he won Oscars for Best Picture and Best Direction. It's tempting to say that over the years, he has created an institution. Except that these days, there are very few institutions as widely respected or as affectionately regarded as the one we know as Clint Eastwood, especially by me. He was my boyhood idol. And now I'm proud to say he's my dear friend. There are very few filmmakers who have created a body of work that has given us so much pleasure or stands up so well. It's a hell of a thing killing a man. You take away all he's got and all he's ever gonna have. Yeah. Well, I guess they had it coming. We all have it coming, kid. I'd like to find out what's underneath the front you put on. Maybe you wouldn't like what you'd find. Bang! I'm Red Stovall. And I'm here to do a few songs for you and uh, pass the hat. So, uh, you got any requests? Just sound them out. Play Misty for me. Gotta get back to Bobberine. Say a prayer for me, will you? I would. But I have no idea what you want. When's your birthday? I don't know. Geez, what kind of childhood did you have? Short. You're wanted, Wales. I reckon I'm right popular. You a bounty hunter? Man, he's got to do something for a living these days. Diane ain't much of a living boy. Nothing like a nice piece of hickory. <coughs> so we come to the end of our show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being so kind to us. I've got a special message for you little partners out there. I want you to finish your oatmeal at breakfast and do as your mom and pa tell you because they know best. Don't ever tell a lie and say your prayers at night before you go to bed. And so, as our friends south of the border could say, Adios, amigos. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Clint Eastwood.
you very much. Thank you. Thank you, my son. Uh, was I in Austria 45 years ago? No, I don't think so. Anyway. Uh, thank you, Arnold. Uh, this is heavy, I got to tell you. You're probably the only guy who can haul this for me. I'd like to thank the Board of Governors of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences for this wonderful award. Um, you know, I look back through the, uh, over the years of, of the uh, recipients of this since 1937, and I see uh, Daryl Zanuck and the great Hal Wallace and uh, William Wyler and Billy Wilder and uh, Alfred Hitchcock and Stevens, all these people that I grew up idolizing. They were my boyhood idols as far as filmmakers, and uh, a lot of them were directors, producers, and, and just straight producers, and uh, they were experts. These people had a great influence, and they were experts in a, a business that has very few experts, really. In fact, if anybody asked me about making films, I would say that, that um, it's probably a little expertise and a lot of luck. Now, how I fit into that equation, well, if, if Dirty Harry, if I was in his sights and he said, do you feel lucky? I'd say you're damn right I do. Thank you. Thank my family. Thank everyone. Welcome, please. Three-time Academy Award nominee and Oscar winner last year for Best Actor, Mr. Tom Hanks. From articulate to incoherent, from free-spirited to repressed, from the romantic past to the hard edge present, these five actresses have given us memorable performances that bring tribute to them and the entire craft of acting. For actress in a leading role, the nominees are Jodie Foster in Nell. And they call me, nailing me, less nailing me, going to tie in the way. Jessica Lang in Blue Sky. Bridget Bardot strips for millions. She's a goddess. I some bit talkless and I'm a scan. You're not Bridget Bardot, remember? What's the matter? I don't make you happy. Miranda Richardson in Tom and Viv. Justice Elizabeth, you have to arrange. Does he know that there are times when I am not allowed in the same room as you? Particularly when the Bishop of Oxford calls. Now, if a big baby wants to stick his head into a bowl, it's called baptism. If I want to do it, it's called shampoo. Winona Ryder in Little Women. Teddy, I'm not fashionable enough for London. You need someone who's elegant and refined. I want you. Teddy, please don't miss me. Susan Sarandon in The Client. I'm going to make that attempt to contact my client or his family again. I'm going to put little marks away on the news prime time. And you can tell everybody how you trample the constitutional rights of an 11 year old. And I got the tape to prove it. And the Oscar goes to Jessica Lang in Blue Sky. I want to thank the Academy so much. This is such a wonderful honor, especially for a little film that seemed to have no future. And uh, it's just such a great honor. I want to thank uh, Orion Films, past and present. <laughs> <laughs>
especially Mark Platt for letting us do this very peculiar little film in the first place, and my dear friend Lynn Aris, the producer who really stuck by the film even when it was sitting on a shelf in a bank vault in New York City. <laughs> um, to the writers, of course, who created a marvelous character, and uh, to the players, a wonderful group of actors that I was fortunate to work with, especially Mr. Tommy Lee Jones, <laughs> <laughs> who really made the performance that I gave possible. And um, this is really a tribute to Tony Richardson as a... Uh, <laughs> He loved actors, he loved everything about it, he loved the acting, and uh, he was the perfect person for me to work with. He just kept nudging me over the edge, and with a character like this, uh, it's exactly what I needed. And last of all, to my three children, <laughs> who um, make all of this possible with their love and patience. So, thank you very, very much. Coming up next, Holly Hunter, Steven Spielberg, and the Oscars for Best Actor and Best Picture. This is Sharon. Hello. <coughs> Once for no, twice for yes. I'm in love with you. Snap out of it. Is she prettier than me? Is she prettier than you? I am prettier than you. Oh. Coaching college back. For Oscar winner who is handsome, versatile, and always working, but has the night off to be here, Denzel Washington. The fifth nomination for Best Picture is the well told tale which strikingly validates that prison life is not always conducive to an inmate's sunny disposition. In the demoralizing confines of a maximum security penitentiary, a young victim of vicious brutality finds salvation in the strength he shares with his only true friend, a yard smart lifer. Bone chilling, heartwarming, and ultimately soul stirring, here is a reminder of the Shawshank Redemption. no idea to this day what those two Italian ladies were singing about. Truth is, I don't want to know. Some things are best left unsaid. I like to think they were singing about something so beautiful it can't be expressed in words and makes your heart ache because of it. I tell you those voices soared higher and farther than anybody in a great place dares to dream. It was like some beautiful bird flapped into our drab little cage and made those walls dissolve away. And for the briefest of moments, every last man at Shawshank felt free. Ladies and gentlemen, the Oscar-winning director of last year's Best Picture, Schindler's List, Steven Spielberg. The category is directing, and this year the nominees tackled a wide variety of subject matter with skill and creativity. The nominees for best achievement in directing are Woody Allen, for Bullets Over Broadway. Robert Zemeckis for Forrest Gump. Quentin Tarantino for Pulp Fiction. Robert Redford for Quiz Show. And Krzysztof Kieslowski for Red. And the Oscar goes to Alex, your father just won the Academy Award. Robert Zemeckis for Forrest Gump.
Uh -huh. It is uh, so incredible that Stephen is handing me this, this great trophy. So I guess I can't think of a more appropriate place or time to say thank you, Stephen. Thank you for believing me, in me and giving me my start, for being a guiding influence in my work, and being a good friend. Thank you very much. Um, there are some others who have uh, contributed greatly to my career. My parents, of course. I'd also like to thank Jack Grabke, Bruce Raymer, John Milius, and Bob Gale. And for this tremendous honor, I'd like to thank the members of the Academy, everyone at Paramount Pictures, my entire cast and crew for doing a job that amazed me every day and, and made it an incredible joy to go to work, to Wendy Feinerman for bringing this project to me and getting it started in the first place, for Steve Starkey to, for making sure we got it finished, Tom Hanks and Eric Roth, my creative soulmates. It's obvious this film could not have been made without your huge talent. Most important, I'd like to thank my wife, Mary Ellen, and my son, Alex, for your love, support, for being my main source of inspiration, not only in my work, but in my life. And finally, I would like to thank motion picture audiences all around the world. In historic numbers, you have embraced a film that at its, at its heart offers a human, life-affirming, hopeful story. Thank you very much. Two former Oscar winners will be here to present the final Oscar of the evening for Best Picture. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to everyone. I've had a lovely evening. Thank you very much for inviting me. Good night, folks. The 67th Annual Academy Awards, brought to you by American Express, for life, for living. Accommodations provided by Hilton Hotels and Resorts. Academy members are invited to vote for nominations for Best Picture. Other nominations are voted by members who are specialists in each field. Winners are decided by vote of the entire membership. 
Only members who attend special screenings may vote in the documentary short films in foreign language categories. The results of the secret voting are known only to the independent accounting firm of Price Waterhouse LLP until the sealed envelopes are opened on the air. For the 67th Annual Academy Awards, this is Randy Thomas.